deep in the heart of the New Mexican desert. A dud of a car is about to get bombed, but will it go pancake flat? In our small scale testing, we showed that a single piece of data sheet gave us the best results. I'm kind of liking this. Now we're going to take a similar approach here, but instead of data sheet, we're going to be using AMPO. The reason we're using AMPO is it's actually better for performing this kind of task. It's a slower moving explosive and it pushes things better instead of breaking them apart, which is what we want. AMPO is definitely the best choice of a boom. And to accurately scale up, that is a lot of boom. Jamie's using a thousand pounds of it. Currently, Jamie is arranging 1,000 pounds of AMPO. That's 20 bags that weigh 50 pounds each on top of the trench plate. Now, the pattern that he's using is one that is invented so that the pulse from the explosion provides a totally universal push on that trench plate into the car. That's the theory. And with the last bag in place, this one-shot deal is ready to rumble. You know those little bags of ketchup that you step on on the sidewalk and they just go... <laughs> That's what's going to happen here. Yep, it's going to be some kind of catastrophe. But to find out what kind, the guys head underground into a bomb-proof bunker. And then it's go time. Okay, this is Pancake Car. Full-scale test. Flattening a terrible car in five, four, three, two, one. That was, uh, that was very intense. That was energetic. Yeah. Oh, that's a piece of the frame. Wow. Yeah. Stuff is still falling. Yeah. <laughs> Without doubt, the Anfo packed a serious punch, sending the three-ton steel gantry over 500 feet in the air. Something that's worth seeing again and again and again. the final season spectacle what's happened to the car <laughs> no way the car is gone the car is gone but that is the exact pattern in which you laid out the info yeah so it went through the top plate through the car and made a car sized dent in the bottom well I guess it's back to the drawing board. <laughs> <laughs> you knocked yourself out, champ. <laughs> so we rushed up to Ground Zero hoping to find a pancake car and instead found no car whatsoever. What seems to have happened is when we pushed the button, the AMFO didn't cleanly push our steel plate down and into the car. It punched a perfect hole through that steel plate, sending chunks flying hundreds of feet and effectively vaporizing the car. The one thing it did not do was flatten the car. Yep, instead of being a flat piece of furniture, the car was blown to kingdom come ripped apart by the immense blast pressure and the top steel plate, which itself turned to lethal shrapnel. So much so that their Yugo wasn't the only car that took a hit. Now, this is one of our rental cars, and it was parked behind our bunker, which is under a mountain of dirt. And the shock wave was enough to crack this windshield just from that. It was too much. This window, however, was not broken by a shockwave. It was broken by shrapnel. Ooh, specifically this, like, 40-pound piece of inch-and-a-half thick steel, which flew probably 750, 800 feet to get here and cause this destruction. 